Hi, I'm Louise Fletcher. I'm a painter from England and I'm answering the question today that I get from lots of artists, which is how to get past fear when it comes to making our art. And I really have a strong belief that this fear comes from a whole set of limiting beliefs that are lurking under the surface in your brain. You think these things are facts, but they're actually just beliefs that you can drop whenever you want. So if you feel experience fear or stress or tension when you're making your art please carry on watching for the next 10 minutes because I can really help because when you get rid of these limiting beliefs possibilities open up everything changes in making your art and this is my mission this is what I want to do for everybody so I want to talk about some of the beliefs that you might be carrying around and if any of these resonate with you please drop a comment below because I'd love to hear from you I'm going to go through the six beliefs that I identified first, and then I'm going to go back and tell you why they're a load of nonsense. So first, proper artists don't make a mess of paintings the way I do. Second, making ugly paintings or bad paintings means I lack talent. I just shouldn't be doing this. I'm not an artist. Third, other people will laugh at me or think badly of me if I make paintings that aren't good. Tied closely into that is number four, other people's opinions about my art matter. Number five, the reason to make art is to make finished paintings. The only reason to sit down and start working or go to an easel is to make something that's finished or to progress something forward. And number six, if I don't make something good, this is a waste of time or it's a waste of money. Any one of these beliefs, if they're lurking up here, they're going to cause fear, stress, tension when you go to work. And that's not fun. So I just want to talk about each of these beliefs. Now, if you come on the free course, which is linked above or below this video, we really get into this stuff in great depth. This is what I do. This is what I love to do. But I'm going to try and do my best to at least pierce some of these beliefs and get through to the deeper part of you now in this video. So real artists don't make a mess of paintings like I do. Yes, they do. Moving on. No, really, yes, they do. All the time. I have interviewed all kinds of artists, so I don't just speak from my own experience. Everybody has paintings. At the end of a series of paintings they make, everybody has some duds. So proper artists do make a mess of paintings all the time. And all the finished paintings I've got were a mess at some point. So in some version of them, looked awful. So we can let go of that one, maybe. Making bad paintings means I have no talent. This is the second one. So we all have had that little voice that goes, you shouldn't be doing this. You have no talent. You, you're just not a very good artist. We all have it, first of all, understand. Everybody, Money cancelled an exhibition of his water lily paintings for two years. I think he postponed it for two years. And he was known to stamp on, burn, trash his canvases in frustration. Everybody makes bad paintings on the way to making good paintings. It's part of the process. It means nothing about your talent. I can safely say this will be my fourth year of running this free course and I have witnessed thousands of people learn that this is nonsense and that they can make great art. Making art is not like playing basketball. You don't need to be a certain height and be born with a certain kind of hand-eye coordination. You just need to learn to express what's inside. And when you do, you will make art that resonates with some other group of people who feel the way you do. So everybody can make good paintings. Other people will make fun of me or think badly of me if I make bad paintings. This goes on in the back of our minds all the time. So what? Like, really, so what? And I'm going to skip that one and go on to the fourth belief because they tie together. The fourth one is other people's opinions are important. Really? Are they? So here's an opinion that might be important. You go on a class to learn how to improve your composition and the tutor who is expert in composition and whose paintings you admire makes a suggestion to you and says he doesn't think the composition's working in the painting that you currently have and he thinks that if you move this shape over there that will be better. That's an opinion you might want to listen to at least in the context of the course. You paid for that person's expertise and it's very specific. 
But if that same person says to you, I really don't like your paintings, I don't like your color choice, I don't like the way you paint, it doesn't matter. However expert they are, it doesn't matter. That's their opinion, that's their taste. And it specifically doesn't matter when it's your neighbor, your brother-in-law, or your mother, or your spouse. Their opinions matter as much as your dogs. Honestly, really, they don't matter. Everybody has their own aesthetic taste, number one. Number two, they don't know what you're trying to do. They don't understand what it's like to be an artist. They don't understand the process of making art unless they already are one. And they can't get inside your mind and understand what you're trying to achieve. So their opinion just doesn't matter. It Likewise, it doesn't matter whether it's good or bad. So you can't let their praise boost you and you can't let their criticism knock you. It doesn't matter. What matters is what you think. Because if you stick to what you love to do and what you think, some other people out there will love it too. Maybe not the people who live with you, but some other people. And this is another thing I know from experience. Last two. The reason to make art is to make finished pieces. Is it? Is it really about that? So if I was to tell you I can wave a magic wand and you can come into your studio, get a piece of paper or a canvas, put it on the table, and then it will magically fill in with paint and look beautiful. And then someone will knock on the door and say, may I buy your latest painting, please? And you can take it over to them and hand it over and they give you money for it. You turn around, you put another canvas down and it magically fills with a beautiful painting. If I could give you that, would you want that? Where would be the point? So if you think about it like that, the point really isn't to make the finished paintings. The way I look at it is the finished paintings are a byproduct of the process that I love, that I get lost in. The paintings pop out at the other end, like on a conveyor belt, if things are going well. And the more I'm engrossed and enjoying myself and doing what I love, the more paintings pop out on the other end. The more I get tight and tense and start trying to finish things, that conveyor belt grinds to a halt when nothing pops out. So the reason to make art is not to make finished pieces. I think it's to go on a journey with yourself, to spend time with yourself, to learn to express what's inside, to learn to get in touch with what's inside, to uh, enjoy solving problems, to get to know the materials. It's all sorts of things. And that brings me to the last point. It's a waste of time and money if I don't make something good. Really? So let's unpack that one for a second. So if someone loves fishing and it improves their mental health after a long, hard day of work, is that a waste of time and money on all that tackle and the licenses and the trips fishing? Is that a waste of money or is that necessary self-care? If someone loves eating out in expensive restaurants and that relaxes them at the end of a tough work week, is that a waste of money or is that just self-care? And if a person loves football and buys a season ticket to see their favorite team and goes and shouts and cheers and gets all their tension and aggression out on the opposing team, is that a waste of money or is that just enjoying life? And the same applies to painting. Why is it a waste of money if at the end of a session you haven't made anything good or progressed anything forward? You enjoyed yourself, you were engrossed, you were doing something you love, You are important too, as well as everyone else. And this is your thing. And you should spend time and you should spend money on it. You're entitled. So do you see how we have these beliefs and the beliefs are what are nattering on in the background, making the painting be stressful, making us be frightened to mess up. If we don't If we know that real artists make a mess all the time, if we know that we have talent, if we don't care what other people think, if we know the reason to make art is not to make finished pieces but to explore, and if we have no worries about wasting time or money, then we can just enjoy the process. And that's when the magic happens. That's when those paintings start whizzing off that conveyor belt. And that's when people really do start asking if they can buy them because you've made them out of love and passion and joy and exploration without fear and other people want a piece of that. 
So if you want to know more about this, if you want to go deeper with me and and really explore what you're capable of, come and join me for the free course. You might think seven days isn't long enough to change anything, but you would be surprised. I have people still write to me years later saying, I can't believe how much things changed for me after that seven days. So if you liked any of what I've said now, and if any of it resonated with you, I know you're going to love the free course. If you're already signed up, I can't wait to see you there. And I hope this gives you a taste of what's going to come for you. And if you're not signed up, get yourself on the list. There's a link above below this video, wherever you're watching. And I really can't wait to meet you. Meantime, leave me a comment and let me know what you think about this video and if anything sounds true to you. And if you feel like you've got past some limiting beliefs, do leave a comment and because everybody else will find that so helpful. Thank you for listening and I'll see you again next week. I'll be doing these videos weekly through the month of May, so I will see you again next week. Take care. Bye-bye.